a facility service company. Um, we are an integrated facility service company, and our focus is to ensure safe, healthy indoor environments. And that has been our approach all along. If you notice, a lot of our literature has been based upon the word healthy. And in this, you know, trying time right now, um, that means more uh, than ever. Um, we're, f we're founded in 1972, and we are an outsourcing and consultant for cleaning, maintenance, engineering, and facility management. Um, we, have a we have developed an accelerating cleaning system, and our system utilizes team specialists, which makes us a leader in our industry. We're a family-owned business with over 2,200 employees. Uh, we're based out of, off uh, out of Albany, but we have offices throughout Western New York. Um, I am the Buffalo Business Development Manager of our Buffalo office, which is located, of course, in Chictawaga on Union Road. So um, I'm just going to go through the PowerPoint because I think it says it best. Um, you know, I'm going to encourage you to ask questions throughout. Um, I do have um, other reference materials that I will be talking about afterwards during your Q&A if you have specific questions about chemicals and products um, and our specific procedures. The one thing I want to say about this PowerPoint is it is catered to, towards our, um, our, our existing customers, um, but it does talk about our actual services um, in terms of how we approach cleaning in general. So um, with that, we'll talk about the COVID-19 repopulation recommendations. And of course, we've been working all along throughout uh, this epidemic. Um, we have not skipped a beat. We uh, cleaned many essential services, uh, utility companies, um, health uh, healthcare providers. So um, we've been lucky that, uh, you know, if anything, we've actually needed more employees because of the increased demand um, so we haven't had to furlough anybody, which is nice. Um, so during this unprecedented time, we're beginning the planning phase to safely repopulate the buildings. With human safety being the primary focus, Janetronics has assembled proven recommendations to assist our valued partners in reintegrating the work population. During this pandemic, Janetronics has remained fully operational, servicing some of our most critical markets in the medical, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, and other essential industries. We have gained valuable experience which can easily translate into other facilities as they reopen. We also rely heavily on the recommendations from our regulatory agencies and industry spec experts and rapidly adapt to changes. And of course, the CDC, um, most of our guidelines are based off of that. We've just um, added to it. We've added a couple steps to CDC as a three-step approach. We have a four-step approach. And uh, of course, the New York State Department of Health, OSHA. Um, we have founded the Cleaning Institute of Research International. Um, that is our company. And then we also have a cleaning consultant company called Concepts4, which we sell to facilities outside of our service market. And it's a software-based program which routes cleaners in our team cleaning process. So Cleaning for Health is our four-phase tactical approach to stage your facility for repopulation while creating a sustainable, clean, and healthy environment. The approach is to plan, then to mitigate, to continually protect, and then manage your program. So planning, uh, this is very much how I would approach any new facility. If you can't me measure it, you can't manage it. So our processes are created from a customized data collection program. Every facility is unique. We know that layout, traffic patterns, and shift populations uh, differentials matter immensely. Analyzing this information helps us craft the best overall cleaning strategy for your specific needs. Just to touch base on this, when I give you a cleaning quote, any type of quote, we go based off of measurements. Our industry has set production rates, uh, depending upon what needs to be done in your facility. And, uh, the past five years, we actually developed a software program where I could enter your floor plans into our system and then enter the specs and determine um, the routes of the cleaners and exactly how, how long it would take for us to clean the facility to your specifications. So mitigating is prior to, uh, to uh, 
actually putting a cleaning plan in place, um, we would do this and come in and we would come in with certified professionals who would execute our state of the art cleaning program to give your facility a baseline. So that's going to get it to the appropriate place where you can safely repopulate. Our, our, our processes are touch point cleaning. We have electrostatic spraying and we also have self cleaning services. It's called nanoseptic and I'll talk about that more. We use industry leading technology to mitigate the risks posed by COVID-19. We also provide educational guidelines to help your employees adjust their behavior to maximize cleanliness and safety. Protecting is moving forward. Janitonics will protect your facility with scientific protocols developed to keep your employees safe. There are millions of biocontaminants, including no COVID-19, that go unseen by the naked eye. To, de to defeat these microscopic threats, we utilize cutting edge technology and the best cleaning systems that exist. No matter what the surface or the situation, we are prepared to give you a healthy, clean environment. And then managing, we adhere to a rigorous service delivery system. We ensure continual improvement in quality management. Our managers understand systems, personnel, and most importantly, your needs. Our comprehensive management and reporting results in quick response and the ability to anticipate your needs. So managing really does uh, uh, it come down to communication and you really have to, once you have the system in place, effectively communicate. Uh, we, do, we do that through a portal system. And I think that it's important for any facility to, to maybe start thinking about ways to develop um, conversations just around safety. So whether it's, you know, maybe setting up a separate email address, COVID-19 at whatever your company name is, um, so that, uh, you know, these things can be reported, you know, aside from your normal cleaning things. Um, I think, it, the, the, you know, the, um, the employees are looking um, for your guidance. So um, these are just some ideas that we've come up with. So employee safety, uh, first and foremost, it's important, fundamental relative to keeping each other safe and strict adherence to stay home when anybody feels ill or displays any symptoms. When at work, uh, we could assist each customer assessing the areas in which employees should wear face masks, where you could work safely without a safe, uh, face covering. We still encourage anyone who could efficiently perform their responsibilities to, re well, to work from home and continue to work from home. So we've seen various uh, repopulation plans. Um, you know, some of the people are talking about 25%. Uh, some people are talking about 50%. We've had production companies just limit their shifts uh, to space themselves out. So um, we've, we, we, you know, we, we see uh, we, we have 24 seven environments where manufacturing has to continue. So we could talk about that regarding your facility. Communications. Uh, so all Janitronics branch offices are fully operational with experienced professionals who stand ready to assist you. Um, personal protective equipment. So there's a variety of personal protective equipment that's designed to protect employees from a host of potential hazards. However, many individuals who are not accustomed to wearing PPE do not understand specifics relative to what am I protected against, how does wearing PPE protect others, and how important is maintaining PPE. Again, we can provide the employee education and training on a variety of health and safety topics to ensure employees remain compliant. And so how are you going to get the employees to buy in and adhere to the PPE protocol? And I think the camera's in the way, so I can't read this thing. But um, I don't know if I can move this. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> so basically what it says is educating employees on um, what to do, why it's necessary. You have to get them to buy in you know, to the, 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 you know, the process. And here's a little, um, you know, uh, we, and we have these in all in posters. So these are all available. These are things that, that, that people are putting up transmission probability 70%. You know, so that's sort of, you know, it's just a little bit easier to understand instead of giving them guidelines or, you know, making rules. Um, I think this is pretty, um, you know, pretty, uh, um, What's the word I'm thinking of? Well, if you read it, you 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 would uh, you get the idea. 
So entrance protocol, so this is important. So controlling the volume of individuals coming into your facility is essential to minimizing risk to other occupants. Janitronics can assist you in customizing an entrance protocol program which customers can implement or have Janitronics perform the service. Some key components will include, so there's a no touch temperature readings of any uh, uh, individual entering a facility. We actually just started doing this in our office. So it's one of those uh, thermometers that you just put close to the head. Um, giving a verbal or written quest, uh, questionnaire, questionnaire. And most of the facilities that I've been visiting that have been open have been doing this. And the questions basically regard around, do you display any signs of coughing, fever, fatigue, or body aches? Have you traveled to New York City or outside the US in the past 14 days? And do you have any known contact with someone who has been confirmed COVID-19 positive in the past 14 days? And also, um, in, you know, when they enter into facility, that's where you'll distribute the required PPE or verify that the individual possesses it. And then of course, there's a visual com confirmation that anybody entering actually sanitizes their hands. You'd really be amazed in, you know, how many people aren't are going in and just walking by, by the sanit you know, the sanitizer stations. You know, I see it all the time in Walmart and Wegmans. It's just, I mean, it's, it's so easy. You know, I just don't understand it sometimes. And Joe, I'll so just again, jump in there and say, if I can, um, for anyone that hasn't already implemented a, um, a form, a questionnaire like that, um, and are looking to do so, I have a, on the Chamber's website at chituaga.org slash COVID-19, there's a, um, a template that you could use to, to recreate um, one that would work for your own, your own team and your own facility. Um, and there's a few other templates there as well, just to have that as a, a resource. Yeah, the New York State of Health has a nice template. Um, it's a questionnaire that you could go through. And then there's a bunch of links that sort of uh, give other guidelines underneath. I, I do have to say that the, the state and the CDC have been great with putting information out there. If you go to their websites, you really, it's all laid out. And there's link after link after link of information, everything including the, you know, the list for the, uh, for this, for this, for the uh, disinfectants, um, all of the processes, you know, we're now in phase two. So they talk about that. There's a, and these are all recommendations and guidelines, you know, um, but these are things that need to be done. Um, you know, I, I, I sort of, you know, I err on the side of caution. Um, so I think everybody should be doing it. Um, but, you know, the language in it, it says that it's optional, which, which I really just, I, I don't think it is. You know, obviously they're not gonna be going to these facilities and checking that you did the, the checklist, but you should, you, you should be doing it. Um, you know, in addition to that, you know, we have posters and constant reminders. So, um, you know, what we've been doing is strategically placing signs and posters, which constantly remind employees of the importance of following hand washing and PPE protocol. Um, you know, some of the examples are identifying the location of the hand washing stations, um, how to best cover your nose and mouth to cough and sneeze, and also um, how to periodically sanitize your workstation. And I want to say something about that too. Um, I've been speaking to a lot of facility managers who have, you know, now more than ever been adamant about talking to their employees about maintaining their own facility, uh, their own stations. So when we go into a facility, we'll obviously spray or wipe down touch points, but you know, everything that the employee touches at their station afterwards, you know, could potentially be in contaminant. And then if they go to other parts of, of the office, it gets spread. So, you know, we're encouraging them to, you know, the, the facility managers to, to take a strong stance about uh, of keeping your workstation clean and sanitized, you know, and that means, you know, sort of leaving it clutter free. It's hard to sanitize a desk that's filled with clutter. So, and that's one of the things when we clean that we've had major problems. If there, there are papers all over somebody's desks, we're just, we're not going to move your papers. So I think that, that, you know, a lot of facility managers have been saying, if you're not going to clean your desk, then we're just not going to sanitize your desk because, you know, we can't touch anything. So I think it's important to, you know, train the employees to keep their desks clean. Um, common area evaluation. So this is big. So, um, you know, we carefully measure 
the common areas. And some buildings have the space available to set up social distancing in break rooms and other areas, and regretfully others uh, do not. So we can assist in evaluating each building to establish the safest means to have employees. So taking lunch or other breaks, we could talk about that, doing it in shifts, minimizing congestion in restrooms, um, determining if employees should wear face coverings or not, and uh, evaluate the suitable condiment, utensils, and other shared products in break areas. So break areas is a big thing. Um, you know, I, I, I'm amazed with how many uh, facilities I walk into and the break areas were just being cleaned with regular cleaner or not sanitizer. I think now uh, people are going to pay a lot more attention to this, especially, you know, vending machines and, uh, and, and touch points such as microwaves and refrigerators. And these are the things that we've been doing all along. Um, and, uh, and I think now more than ever, people are going to pay attention to it. So again, touch point cleaning, Janitronics offers a variety of products and services customizable to the needs of all facilities. So we, could, we would gladly provide each customer many options for periodic and continuous touch point cleaning, we call it TPC. And it not only contributes to a healthy facility, it allows peace of mind to those working and knowing their health is important. Uh, we also have an emergency response team to decontaminate areas that have been impacted should an employee be confirmed as COVID-19 positive. So we've had quite a few examples of that. And uh, it's a 24, 48 hour turnaround. We've done a lot of residential buildings as well. And vehicle sanitation. So again, we, we do a number of large utility companies. So we uh, maintain their fleets um, and shared vehicles, golf carts, materials, handling equipment. Um, we offer electrostatic spraying um, services, which will safety sanitize all touch points from the steering wheel to the radio controls. And those are the ones that we use inside the offices too. And this is the nanoseptic. The nanoseptic is an innovative uh, nanotechnology product, and it's a self-cleaning service uh, surface. So nanoseptic skins and mats turn dirty high traffic public touch points into continuously self-cleaning surfaces. It's powered by light and nanoseptic surfaces utilize mineral nanocrystals, which create a powerful oxidation reaction. Working 24 seven, the surface continues to oxidize organic contaminants. Unlike traditional disinfectants and cleaners, the nanoseptic surface uses no poisons, heavy metals, or chemicals at all. And uh, nothing is released from the surface since the nanocrystals are molecularly bonded to the material. So we've been getting uh, an overwhelming response to this product. Uh, we are the New York State um, distributor for it. And, uh, you know, we have um, facilities ordering them from anything from door handles to uh, pads for the elevator buttons, um, push bars. And this is it. Uh, this is who I am. And uh, you could contact me at uh, joel at janitronicsinc.com. And we're right down the street from. Christina, uh, we're right across from the uh, Chituaga Police Station, um, and uh, you could pop by and see me anytime. Okay, well, thank you, Joe. So, um, just a reminder: if you have any questions, now that Joe's kind of walked through the presentation, um, even if it's questions specific to your uh, place of business or your facility, feel free to drop them in the. Uh, Q and A, um, but you know that was really informative, and I think it's it's tough when you know we have to go through and and look at so many different scenarios, and it really has you you really have to think internally of your own place of business. Have you seen any um, Joe best practices overall, or something that you've seen that could maybe be recommended to the folks on the webinar today that? Um, everybody is doing or, or they should be looking out for, um, whether it's not specific to one certain industry, but, um, you know, is it the, the touch point cleaning or, or what, a, what have you seen? Yeah, so um, in general, um, I've seen a, a greater attention being paid towards sanitizer, sanitizing stations. Um, you know, facility managers are all getting very creative. Um, as you know, there was a run on Purell. Um, you know, we had customers over ordering and trying to hoard, which we, um, you know, we quickly stopped. We sent them, you know, what they need. Um, but 
familiarizing themselves with the process of, of sanitizing and disinfecting and understanding the chemicals is, is a big part of this. Um, you, and again, you'd be amazed at how many facilities I go into and, and I just see a bottle of bleach. And um, you know, if you're gonna be cleaning with bleach, you have to make sure that you use the proper guidelines as the amount of water being used. You know, our chemicals are all specifically measured. They're all on the CDC list. And um, you know, they're all listed for the COVID-19 um, virus. So education, I think it's most important that, um, you, know, that, you, that you learn about this. Um, and that's what most of our, uh, our, our customers are doing is that they just want to get as much information from us as possible. Yeah. So can you touch on any of that as far as the, uh, the chemicals and the CED or <laughs> CDC requirements and, um, you know, the EPA recommendations? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the CDC has a list, um, and I'm just going to pull it up here. Um, and it's on the EPA website actually. And I don't know if you can see my screen. Um, uh, no, we can't. Yeah. Okay. So, so the EPA, um, has a, it's called list and tools and it's COVID-19 disinfectants. And, um, basically what it covers is all the disinfectants that you could use against, um, and it's called the SARS, S-A-R-S COV-2. And that's the virus that causes this COVID-19. And you really have to make sure that you're using a disinfectant that's on this list. And if you go to it, you know, there's a launch button and you could put in any of the uh, chemicals that you see on your cleaning carts. So anything that, they, that you've been using regularly, um, just type it in. If it's not on there, get rid of it and use something else. Um, you know, one of the important things that we also discuss is um, in, in our business is, uh, you know, making sure that you have the right um, information available for the chemicals that you're using. Again, you'd be surprised with how many facilities I go to and I look in their janitor's closet and there's not a list of the chemicals that are in there. OSHA requires that you, you have a list of all chemicals that are in, you know, in your closet and in your facility. And that gives you, you know, it tells you the exact breakdown, what it does, measures against poison prevention. Um, and, you know, when we set up a janitor's closet, we make sure that every chemical that's in there um, has the SDS. So I have SDS forms available. We use um, three different uh, disinfectant type uh, solutions. Um, we use tabs, which are C. diff tabs. Um, and those also, uh, the, the company that we use for our sanitizing, is, it's called um, Protexis. And they have a, a product that's on there. Um, and that is, uh, it's called, um, what do we have here? So that's called Pure Tabs. And again, you can find, it, it, find that listed on the CD, uh, the, uh, not the CDC website. I say the EPA website. Um, and then uh, we use 3M products. And again, what you want to make sure is that it's called a disinfectant. And the 3M has a, a 5L quad disinfectant. And it's important to know also is if you're not cleaning with, uh, you know, we don't use any ammonia or bleach based products. Like, you know, people like ammonia and bleach because it almost kills instant instantaneously, but you know, it could be toxic. So we use products that have a dwell time and it's important to follow that dwell time. So whatever you have and whatever you're using, there might be a dwell time. So if you spray it on, you can't wipe it right off. You, you know, you need to let it sit for 60 seconds or two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, um, we had a question here in the, uh, the Q&A box as well. And, um, you know, that's something I was curious about as you were speaking about it as well. So the nanoseptic items um, for door pulls and push bars, um, are those available a la carte? Is there pricing? Yeah, they are. There? Absolutely. So if you go to our box. website and you click on the big red COVID-19 button on the top, um, just go to the store and you could order it and it ships straight from Albany. Um, you know, the prices are all there. Um, you know, there's limited availability right now, but mm -hmm. if you put your order in, um, you could also just email, there's an email address on there and uh, anything that you're interested in that might be out of stock. Okay, great. 
So we've, um, you know, obviously been working with a lot of our small businesses as well. Um, for, for a business that maybe wouldn't be in a position to um, contract out with a full team um, or a team of people, do you have any recommendations for uh, some of the steps that they could take or, or things that would be, you know, different than contracting with, with a team such as yours? Yeah, and, absolutely. And I mean, what, um, what sizes of, of organizations are typically your clients? Yeah. So, so again, um, you know, we typically service facilities that are 20,000 square feet or bigger, but not for, for disinfecting. So for disinfecting, we'll go out and spray down. It's important to know that you have to get to your baseline. So, um, the, however you clean your facility, if I'm going to come in and spray it or do touch point, um, you're going to have to be the baseline cleaning. So um, for smaller facilities, I would suggest cleaning it thoroughly, and then we could come in and sanitize and disinfect using the, the guns. It's, it's, it's very inexpensive. We have a, a team out with these guns. Um, actually, uh, we're going to be doing the Erie County voting sites. Um, for, for, so it's a, it was, I was contacted by them yesterday. And so it's good to know that they're going to be following the same protocols because, you know, on June 12th, uh, we have early voting here in Erie County. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly good. And, and we all know that public health is paramount. And, you know, I think all of our businesses want to be in a position where they can get reopen and reopen quickly, but, but I'll do so safely. So, you know, that's where conversations like this are, are important. And, you know, we'll continue to direct people to, um, you know, the resources that they can take advantage of here locally uh, to make sure that, that we can all do that and, and continue to reopen safely. Um, so some of the things that you mentioned, I'll make sure to add links both in the follow-up uh, that we do with the webinar, the recording and such, um, but I'll make sure that those links are available on the Chamber's uh, website that I mentioned before as well. So chipiwaga.org slash COVID-19, we'll put a series of links right at the top there. So, you know, if you do have questions regarding the EPA requirements or, you know, disinfectant protocols, uh, you can access it there and, and Joe will certainly share your contact information as well. Um, so. Yeah, so I have some general checklists yeah. that um, I'd be happy to share. So just shoot me an email or call me anytime and uh, I can send you the general uh, the general checklist that don't actually include. Um, uh, it's more generalized based on what, if you're just doing your own cleaning um, or you have a small local person that comes in maybe for a couple hours a week. Um, you know, maybe you could give them a checklist to uh, to, you know, to to, to sort of make sure that they're doing the things and checking it off every day. And that, and that's important. Um, checklists are extremely important at this point. Um, you know, whether it's a big facility or, a, you know, 1000 square foot um, retail space, mm -hmm. you know, every area in your, in your space is different. You know, the front door has to be handled differently from um, the back wall. You know, the floors have to be handled differently. Um, the counter that you're standing at has to be handled differently. So things that the normal cleaner might not uh, pay attention to, um, checklists are helpful to, to give them a little bit better guidelines. Sure. Are you recommending documentation of all of those checklists as well, like continued record keeping of when things are sanitized and to what extent Absolutely. over and above the safety plan? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that um, having regular, uh, we you know, we, we're continu continuously auditing any facility that we manage, whether it's a small facility or a big facility, um, the inspection process and the sign off process. And even if it's not, you know, let's just say you have a local cleaner or a, a family member that comes in and does the cleaning, um, just maybe have somebody who comes in in the morning and, and check off that it was done the night before. Um, again, just uh, documenting things and uh and and making you feel safe and 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 it's also something that you can communicate to your customers um you know i've I've seen you know customers that say you know this place has been sanitized you know when you come in um you know that it, it's uh you know it, it, the more information uh you provide them with i i find that you know 
just having um, the presence of a bottle of, of a CDC sanitizer um, when you walk in the front door makes a customer feel better. And, you know, and it's also a talking point. So, oh, I just want to let you know that the place was sanitized and we use this chemical. And, and, you know, now all of a sudden your customers put at ease where, you know, customers are walking into stores and, and businesses right now and they don't know what to touch and they don't know what to do. And so anything that you could provide them with, um, you know, is definitely helpful. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that because, um, you know, I was talking to a chamber member uh, the other day as well, and we talked about, you know, the changes or anticipated changes in consumer behavior. And, you know, it's almost that you need to, um, you know, sell safety just along with, with everything else and ensure that, you know, people are very aware of the steps that you've taken. So I'll be interested as we move forward and kind of get past the um, reopening phases, how long that if there will be any extended change to consumer behavior and, and interactions with, you know, public facing customers and, and things like that. So it's, it's definitely going to be a new environment for everyone. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it, things have changed a little bit with the information, the way information is disseminated. I mean, um, it wasn't that long ago that we had the swine flu in 2011. And of course we were around for that. And again, you know, we were for quick and reacting and uh, we, you know, we were ahead of the game, um, but it didn't, you know, it didn't stick in people's minds for very long. I think that this time around, um, with a little bit more attention, because uh, it was, it's basically, it was basically almost the same infection rate as uh, the swine flu as COVID-19. Um, it's just that, uh, you know, people are talking about it more. And, you know, I think that with the web and, and with the news outlets now and everything being online, you really, it's really in our faces. So yeah. um, hopefully, you know, hopefully, hopefully people will continue to practice, you know, safe uh, and clean, uh, you know, healthy uh, safety. So we'll see. Okay, well, I'll get back at it. Well, I don't see any other additional questions coming up in the Q&A. Um, we, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, you know, we do have lists and of, uh, chamber members that are offering different products and different um, PPE resources. So I'm going to make a few updates uh, to that list after we jump off the call today. And that too will be on the chamber's website at that cheekdewaga.org slash COVID-19. Uh, so you can access that for a list of resources. Um, your contact information, obviously, Joe, I'll share. Uh, anything final in, in wrapping up here if there's no other questions? Well, I just wanted to say, Christina, I, I, I'm amazed by uh, the the amount that you've absorbed and and the interest that you've taken in this. Uh, it, it really is. Uh, it shows your, your your dedication to your community. It's uh, it's you know you from from everything from what you the information that you've gathered from your personal knowledge and everything on the website. I just want to thank you for that. Oh, well, we appreciate that. You know, we appreciate the partnership that we have with each of our, our members and members of the business community. And, you know, I think it's, we all know it's, it's a different world and it's going to be a different world moving forward. And just prior to um, the world changing, the chamber and our board of directors, we had actually walked through uh, a strategic planning session and um, newly developed a, a mission, a vision, a set of core values that um, is very similar to, to what we've had and how we've operated in the past, but, but with a new mindset for a renewed future. So it was interesting to see us go through that. And um, our newly adopted mission statement, many of you may know, was to foster a thriving business community here in Chikawaga. And we would look at the changes over the last few months how that's going to look going forward is going to be very, very different and more crucial, I think, than ever before in how we're all planning and working together to impact the long-term economic recovery. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to have a conversation with you this morning, Joe, and you know some of the other webinars that we've done as well, and, and I want to continue doing these. So for anyone listening on the webinar, um, please, if you have additional topics or very specific things that you're dealing with, don't hesitate to reach out to us at the Chamber of Commerce, um, either through a phone, email, uh, contact us through the website. But please know that we are here for, for each of you, and we're going to get through this all together. Thanks so much, Christina. And everybody, stay safe. <laughs> yes. Thank you again. Stay well, everyone. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.